honestly about this. I think I'm going to probably cancel the service Sunday, Sunday morning and Sunday night. And I think that would be the wisest thing to do. Uh, we don't invite this thing. I've been praying that this thing goes out in the Atlantic. Uh, I lost quite a bit of sleep last night trying to do that. And uh, I'm not that I'm worried about this storm. I'm not. But I, I, I know the damage that it can do to homes and, and, and property. And uh, I really don't want the electric to go off because I like air conditioning. That was not fun when Charlie come through here. So uh, anyhow, but uh, and if it, the projected thing they're saying now is going farther east. So I, I believe, you know, we're just going to get, we're going to get a little bit of rain and, and or quite maybe a lot of rain and a little bit of wind. But uh, you just don't know if the power goes off. We can't do anything here anyhow. And, a tree, you know, trees, as wet as the ground is, you get a little bit of wind. There's going to be a lot of trees falling, and it's going to be dangerous to be out on the road. So uh, that's why I've come to that conclusion. So, uh, yeah, safety's the most important thing. And also... Uh, We've got it. We're prepared to open the church for anybody, the church families that need a shelter. In other words, if you live in a mobile home or some place that's subject to flooding or something, uh, I don't know. Uh, who, is there anybody here that would be interested in that? Okay. All right. Uh, it's. The, I think, from what I understand, the storm is supposed to mainly start. We're starting to feel the effects of it. I think around. 8 o'clock Sunday morning, I believe that's what it was. Saturday night. Eight, maybe it was 8 o'clock Saturday night. Okay. Anyhow, so what, what we can do if you want, uh, we can have, we can get the place opened up for you Saturday uh, afternoon sometime uh, or whatever your favor is. If Somebody you want to, uh, I need to put somebody in charge because I'm going to have to be at my house with my mother and my wife to watch over them. Uh, so if you're, I need somebody to be in charge if we you come up here. So uh, anybody that wants to volunteer for that, I'll be glad to accept. You want to be in charge? Well, anything that needs to be done, you'll do it. Okay, I appreciate that. All right. So anyhow, uh, but y'all got, every one of you got my cell number if, uh, what you can do is you can give me a call whenever you feel like you need to come or whenever you want to come, and I'll meet you up here and get you in and everything. So uh, just play it by ear, you know. I'm just trusting the Lord. He's just going to do what? Oh, now we're not furnishing food and stuff. You're going to have to bring your own bedding and food. And we got two uh, of our bottled water things out here with extra bottles of water. So we got plenty of water. If the power goes off, you'll have water to drink. Uh, if the electric goes off, the, the, the pumps, we're on pumps, so you won't have uh, flushing toilets. So anyhow, use those sparingly. Uh, <laughs> or if the thing fills up out there, just get you a bucket and you can dump it right down the bowl and that'll flush it. Uh, well, we got us a seven-holer out here, so that's good. Any questions before I get started? There. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Yeah, that's when it's supposed to be coming in, I guess. So we just, uh, we need everybody just hunkered down. I'm sure the ones that's going to be in here is going to do enough for praying for everybody. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. I don't know if they mention it, but I guess it is. Anyhow, it's good to see everybody tonight. How many of y'all are a little apprehensive? Just a little bit? Okay, praise the Lord. How many of you ever gone through a hurricane? All right. I don't know what you're apprehensive for. You know what to expect. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, if we got electric, even if we don't, we'll have a generator going, hopefully, so. Anyhow, we should. Might not have uh, AC, but we got some fans going, so that's all right, too. 
Take your Bibles and turn over to Acts chapter 27 with me. I thought I'd get y'all primed up here. Acts chapter 27. And let's, let's save a little bit of time. Let's start reading about verse 9. It says, Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the ladening of the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. That just shows you nobody ever listens to the preacher. <laughs> and because the haven was not uh, commodious uh, to winter in, uh, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Finnis, and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete, and lieth toward uh, the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. Now they were thinking safety and peace. Everybody in this world or basically this country, I guess I better say, has that mindset of safety and peace. In verse 14 it says, But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurachlodon. And that is basically the same thing as what we call Irma. <laughs> And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, staked sail, and so were driven." And we, being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when another, neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay upon us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have listened unto me. In other words, you should have paid attention to what this preacher is trying to tell you. And not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. That angel of God is Jesus Christ, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank and praise you tonight for the Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your marvelous grace. And God, as we're coming to you, Lord, and, and opening this book, God, I pray that anointing power of the Holy Spirit of God would fall down upon this message, upon your messenger. And Lord, just meet with us here for just a little while tonight. I pray, God, that you'd get honor and glory from everything that's said and done. And, Lord, we just want to praise and thank you, God, for your protection and your love towards your children. And, God, I pray, Lord God, that you would, Father, just put a hedge not only around this church but around every family in this church. And, God, I pray, Lord, that storm might just be 
pushed away from us, God. And I pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, I got this thing on now. I forgot to put it on a while ago. But as the storm that we're dealing with here is a very serious storm. And the one that we're dealing with right now is a very serious storm. And as I was uh, turn this thing down just a little bit, this thing's a little bit loud, I think, at least it is to me. Bible tells us in verse 21 that, But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Now, I have every commentator I've looked at in this portion over the years, I've read this, every one of them, and, and I, I might be wrong and they're right, I don't know, but they, they say that that long abstinence is they hadn't eaten anything in a long time, which that's probably true, they hadn't. But the conjecture here I get with this verse 21, it says, but after long abstinence, Paul. I believe Paul got along with God. And it says, and stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have listened to me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you, be of good cheer, for there shall no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For Now this is why I, I, I came to the conclusion that he met with Jesus. For there stood by me this night. I believe Paul got along with God because I believe Paul said, Look, man, we're in a mess. And I want to let you know you are in a mess in this life. There's nothing that you can do to get you out of this mess other than the rapture of the church. We've got to endure unto the end, so to speak. Yeah. Everything that comes before us is for a lesson, and it teaches us something. We can understand if we're taken and apply every little trial and every tribulation that we have in our life, it gets us closer to Jesus Christ. It helps us put more faith and trust in Him. Yeah. And a lot of times things like this happen. Uh, it's so easy to get caught up in all the, if I was lost, you know, I would be somewhere up on the other side of Georgia by now. But I'm trusting in the mighty hand of God. And I tell you what, I, there's, I'd rather be there than any place I can imagine. And you know, as, as I was thinking about this, and I, I'm going to share a little bit of the chapel message with you. Turn over to Matthew with me. Uh, I preached uh, chapel today. And uh, the Lord kind of put this on, on my heart and my mind to, to bring to them kids. In verse chapter, Matthew chapter 8 and verse 23, now this is a familiar story when, the, when the, Jesus got into this ship to go to the other side. It says in verse 23, And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. Now these are fishermen that are used to storms, that have been out on, their, on, the, on that sea all their lives, and they knew that this was a bad one, the same way that Paul and those mariners that was with him knew that that was a bad one. And Jesus came to Paul and said, Look, don't worry about it. There's not going to be any loss of life. Only all the laden of the church, I mean, of the, of the ship, and the ship itself is going to be lost. But he said in verse 25, And his disciples came to him and awoke him and saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Right. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Amen. And the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? These ones saying that had already seen him cleanse the leper, give the sight back to the blind, feed 5,000, and here they are saying, What manner of men, man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? All right, let me show you something here. Turn over to Luke chapter 
No, Mark chapter 4. I'm sorry. Yeah, Mark chapter 4. That's where I want to go. Mark chapter 4. This is the same account of what's going on here in Matthew. Just, just Mark's putting down what he saw and heard. Verse 35, it says, In the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. He knew they were going to make it. He said, let us pass over to the other side. There wasn't no doubt in his mind. And when this storm did arise up, when it started banging around, guess what? All the gospel preachers was in one boat and the devil was trying to kill every one of them along with Jesus Christ. But I guess what? They wasn't going to kill Jesus Christ. Man, he could walk on the water, man. You wasn't going to drown him. Glory. Hallelujah, man. Over here in Mark chapter 4. Let me finish reading that before I get beside myself. And it says, verse 36, And when they had, uh, when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. Now see, Matthew didn't say nothing about the other little ships. And it says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Yep. How'd you like to be in a boat out there in a storm like that, and the waves come over the edge of it, the side of it, and it's full? What happens when a boat gets full of water? It sinks. You ever wonder why that boat didn't sink? It was already full of water. I wonder stuff like that. But it, let's go on. Verse 38, and it says, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now listen to what he said here. He arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. He rebuked the wind, and see, the wind was the problem. The wind is what was causing the big waves. The wind was what was contrary, and the wind was controlled by the God of this world, the devil himself, and Jesus rebuked the wind. And then he talked to the sea, and he said, peace, be still. I like this. And... The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's nothing that can befall either anybody here that's one of God's children that God's not involved in. I'll tell you what, God, you're in God's hands. God has got a protective coat around every one of us, and I'm not worried about nothing. Guess what? If something happened and this whole building just collapsed on us right now and every one of us get killed, glory, hallelujah, you know how good that would be? I mean, we'd be in heaven. And I tell you what, glory, hallelujah. I was, I was thinking Miss Carol's probably upset with us praying her out of bed when she said, I'd be in heaven by now for what y'all praying for me. We wasn't, God wasn't through with you and we wasn't either, sister. You're, much, you're too much of a blessing to the church. All right, now let's go back to, uh, where was I at? Acts. Let's go back to Acts. But see, Jesus is the only one that can rebuke the storm. But see, he knew what the cause of the storm was. Every person that's in this world has a storm going on inside of them. A lot of people don't have the rebuker of the storm. When you get saved, you've got somebody that's saying, okay, quit. Stop it. That's like our RU program. You get up there and you start, you know, these people are strung out on these drugs and stuff. The reason they don't quit is, first of all, they don't want to. And then when you get past that or to that point to where you want to, then you've got to overcome the tempter. Because, see, the tempter is always right there 
when a storm comes up, what's the best thing to do? Get stoned and forget about it. No, go to God and pray. Amen, brother. That's a living testimony right there. Glory. Hallelujah, man. I am too. Boy, I tell you what, God done a work down deep in my heart. He took that junk away from me just bam like that. I was good to go after that. And I ain't looked back yet. Amen. Don't want to. I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. I'm looking, I've got my eyes set on heaven. I want to see my Savior. I want to see Him face to face. I want to thank Him for saving my soul. But see, Paul knew where to go. Now, there's five things that we can do when we have problems. Now, see, we got a problem floating around out there in the ocean. It's called Irma. Don't get all upset and troubled over Irma. And if Miss Irma's watching, hey. How could they name a storm like that after a sweet little lady like that? But when you have problems in your life, you need to understand the first thing you need to do is like Paul, after long abstinence, he spent some time with God. And every one of us need that in our lives. I tell you, God woke me up about 3.30 this morning. I was wide awake. I just laid there, and I talked to God. And, I, you know, I said, God, you know, I said, I know you're in control of everything. And he is. But I said, God, I sure would appreciate it if you'd take that storm and just keep pushing it over to the east. Just keep pushing it and get it out there in the Atlantic where it won't hurt nothing or nobody. There's a lot of people been praying that too. It ain't just me. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. After long abstinence, when you got a problem facing you, spend some time alone with God. Look over, hold your place there, and look over in Isaiah chapter 40 with me just a minute. Isaiah chapter 40. I want to show you just one verse there. Isaiah chapter 40. I hope I wrote the right verse down there. Look at verse 1. It says, Comfort ye, comfort, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished and that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received the Lord's hand double of all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. That was quoted again back in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 3. And it says, every valley shall be exalted. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. Amen. Now think about what that said. Every valley shall be exalted. Right. Amen. We're walking through a valley. And the Bible says that every valley shall be exalted when we acknowledge God and put Him first. Amen. Every mountain and every hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty big God that loves us that much. The next thing we need to do is look at verse 23 here back in Acts chapter 27, 23. And it says, And there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. In other words, 
He had a conversation with the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. We need to practice the presence of God in our life. Every day. You're not going to do that just getting up and drinking a cup of coffee and leaving. You need to have a little bit of time of praying and a little bit of time of reading this book. Amen. Asking God to help you that day, help guide you and help, help you to be a witness for Him. Amen. Another thing we need to do when we have problems, look at verse 25. We must believe His promises. Verse 25, it says, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Amen. Do you believe God? Amen. He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. His protective hand is over us all the time. Amen. I know when we were up in North Carolina, there was a little old lady we used to we kind of started taking care of and she didn't have too much. Her husband had passed away and she was like almost 90 years old and frail little lady. Couldn't hardly walk real good. and uh, Yeah, she was blind and couldn't see real good. And I guess if you're blind, you can't see real good. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, we would we'd take turns. We'd go over and mow her yard for her and we'd take her food every week, take her food and put it there where she could find it and tell her exactly what it was and where it was. And name was Mrs. Hicks. She loved the Lord. And uh, I don't know if you, Darlene, I think you went with me that time uh, over there. Uh, she, was, she was telling me this story of what had just happened to like the week before that there's about three or four young boys broke in her house. And she always sits in her chair and she's got her Bible right here and she's always you know, our tapes, and I took her, we took her a cassette player with Alexander Scorby so she could listen to the scriptures, and she always held the Bible in her hand. She couldn't read it, but she always held it in her hand when she was playing the tape. Them boys come in there, and they started ransacking their house, and, and she talked to the one guy there, and she couldn't see him, didn't know who it was. She said, honey, she says, you know, Jesus loves you. You know, I'm one of God's children. I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. And I want to let you know that, you know, what y'all are doing here, God is going to judge you for. I forgive you, but God might not. That boy looked at the rest of me and said, let's go. They didn't take one thing out of her house. Amen. I believe God, this thing here went off there. I believe God turned this back. I believe God that he is able to accomplish everything that he said he was going to do, everything that he said he was going to accomplish. Amen. I believe that God is more than able to take care of any little problem that we have. Yes. I tell you what, he's the one that created everything that there is. And I want to let you know that God is the one that said, hey, peace, be still Amen. to that storm, yes. and he can do it today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Another thing we must do, not only practice His presence and believe His promises, but we must count our provision. Look at ver down at verse 34. It says, Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were in all in the ship two hundred three score and 16 souls, 276 men, not one of them lost their life. Amen. So if you're troubled about this storm coming up, 
God didn't say he was going to protect all the buildings and everything that's associated with that. But God has got to protect them upon you. And guess what? If something did happen to take you home, you're better off anyhow, honey. That's all I got to say. I'm good to go. I don't know about you, but I'm not worried about anything. I'm trusting God. I believe that God is the one that's in control. He's the one that has everything in order and everything is according to His plan. And I tell you, when God saved my soul, He set my feet upon that rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've been standing on that rock and I don't care how hard the storm comes, how hard high the water gets, that rock is always just a little bit higher and it's always a little bit stronger. And I want to let you know that my Jesus can take care of us. So don't worry, church. God is in control. God, I believe God that He is able. Hallelujah, man. Amen. 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 We must purge ourselves of excess baggage. When you're in trouble, you got a, you got some problems. What did they do? Well, they cast aside all the wares of the church. Didn't I mean of the, of the ship? Didn't they? Yep. I can't get the old ship of Zion out of my mind. That's the ship they ought to have been on because that's unsinkable. Yeah, that's right. Amen. But there's a lot of excess baggage that we have. I don't know if you realize that or not. Amen. We've got a lot of things we want, but we don't really need. That's right. That's right. So what did, what did God do here? He got rid of everything that they didn't really need. I bet they would have settled for a big four-cylinder diesel engine in that ship. They needed that. But they probably never even heard of a four-cylinder diesel engine back then. All they had was sails. If the wind this went this way, they had to basically go that way or or do this jig-jag thing they do. That's called tacking. You didn't know I was a sailor, did you? I was trying to pull that phrase up. It took me a while, but I got it. But they got rid of everything, and then they took a little bit of food, got their strength back up, and they were all of good cheer, and God saved every one of their lives. Now, that ship broke apart on the rocks, and, you know, a lot of them on there were prisoners. They were going to kill them so they wouldn't escape, but the one centurion said, no, let's just let them, we'll, we'll get them, we'll send one of the soldiers get up there on the bank first, and when they come up there, we can, we can keep track of them. So they, they probably got on, you know, all the ones that could swim, they jumped overboard and took off. The ones that couldn't swim, they grabbed a hold of something and did the doggy paddle, I guess, or whatever they got to shore. But every one of them made it. Why? Because Jesus said they would. And I want to let you know that Jesus said every one of us is going to make it. So calm down. God's got this. Ever eye closed, ever head bowed, let's stand to our feet. Our Heavenly Father, we do praise and thank you tonight for Jesus.